Hello, welcome to CSSC Encounters. My guest today is Dr. Pearl Hao King Wang from the Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Yes. Uh, you are teaching there a couple of classes on marketing, communication, internet, and media, right. and uh, related subjects. But you are currently here uh, at the Kennedy Harvard University uh, as a uh, Rajawali Fellow mm -hmm. for a year, I guess. Yes. So that's quite a long time to experience some uh, American culture and <laughs> being able to compare uh, what you're yeah. experiencing here with what you uh, have left for the time being in, in uh, China. Uh, but uh, during your time in China, you were not only a professor, but also working as a journalist and an editor, mm -hmm. and uh, even uh, hired by the uh, Shanghai Municipal uh, Authority to uh, assist them in the development of uh, participatory and creative cities, if right. I'm not mistaken. And that's also the topic uh, of today's presentation you're going to make mm -hmm. uh, for us uh, later today. Uh, the title of that uh, seminar is City, Creativity and Communication in China. Can you briefly explain what uh, uh, that is about? Yeah, thank you very much. I feel, first of all, I should say I feel very honored to be here, especially I think that today's seminar actually for me is a very good opportunity to learn from mm -hmm. each other. And uh, uh, what I want to share with uh, scholars and students here is about what we did or what we experienced in the context of China or mm -hmm. Shanghai, specifically Shanghai, to develop a participatory city by new media and a creative communication. So that's why I title the uh, talk with like a city creativity and right. communication. So uh, here I, I, you know, there are too many questions asked me about Shanghai, about China. It's so hot. It's mm -hmm. much hotter than years before, I think, here, this trip. Yeah, give me, impress me in this way. And what, it's good. weather-wise, you mean? Sorry? What, weather-wise, uh, is it? It's, uh, it's like, a, a, you know, during the expo time, I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's 2010, right. and that, that year I, well, I just, just stayed in my country, never left, never traveled. Mm -hmm. So this year I feel quite a big difference between, you know, from, from the years before that. Okay. And uh, every time when we talk about an international or global topic, China must be one topic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. China has become very yes, popular yes, lately. Right. Not always in positive ways, I would say. But, <laughs> but I think it's in an objective way. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so that's good. And but I think sometimes uh, I think this, those uh, people will will in lack of updated knowledge because China grows too fast. Mm -hmm. And if you are not in there for one month. That will be huge difference. Right. And for, for example, like uh, last time I went back in December last year, I mean, just quite the end of the year. And mm -hmm. that means that I was left only for four or five months. Mm -hmm. And uh, totally the popular words changed. Mm -hmm. I, j I just need to check up online to see what's the most popular words there, expressions there, so that I will be out. There right. is a very popular word to say you are out means you are out of that, yeah, out of date. Right. So I don't want to be out, you know. And that's it's it's another kind of a side of evidence to see this country is on a way to be innovative, and to raise some you know uh, uh, things innovative development here uh, compared with here. Mm -hmm. So what I want to share is that how to use or we say the relationship between communication and development actually has different definitions. Right. Especially in the new age of interactive media and the social media. So I want to share something with scholars here, what we did using social media or new media or creative communication to mm -hmm. engage people more in the city's development. Okay. okay. Or, or, or say we say like uh, communication can be about development also can be for development. But what I want to say is that with kind of a change, um, say 
when you are a person to be in, involved in, in the participation, you can be passively, you can be actively, also you can be indirectly or you can directly, or mm -hmm. you can be individually or you can be networkedly. So here I think the trending thing is that it's more active, that means more self-motivated, mm -hmm. and also it's more direct. That means you, you're using social media not only as a receiver, but as a sender, as a agenda setter mm -hmm. to mobilize others to participate. You it's more assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and also the third characteristic is that you're more networked. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the new trends for me, means that participatory communication itself is a development. Okay. So that's why I say, uh, I totally agree with that idea, say participation is not only uh, a, an approach or strategy for the development, but itself is a part of development. Mm -hmm. So I just want to use some cases happen in China or in Shanghai to showcase that. Right. That's true, and it's happened universally. So that's kind of uh, main contents for today's uh, seminar. Okay, so you gave already a bit of a difference, uh, identifying the differences between American and uh, <laughs> Chinese uh, right. participation and communication. Yeah. So can you come up with some concrete examples? Um, I think, yeah, just give you an example, very vivid example, just now you show me, the, uh, t took me around this uh, 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 studio or mm -hmm. this uh, media organization and on the wall there are quite many, say it's exhibition of arts mm -hmm. and I told you that this is what I want to do too when I'm back. I want to make more public space to be like a public gallery for public arts. Right, yeah, that's, integrated space. Yeah, yeah, that's one way I say now just uh, in the seminar I will uh, define, redefine the media. So what's media for participation? Actually media is everywhere. The public space is the most vital media for me actually. Mm -hmm. So I think when we use uh, media means space is, you, is, is the media and the, the wall is media, even this table is media. We use them for participation everywhere. Right. So that's kind of be very vivid. And the same thing is that the, the, the uh, Ash Center where, where I, I am now, uh, the building did the same thing. It's mm -hmm. open to Cambridge Arts Association to be their gallery. So this is also kind of a bridge between business and arts right. or so yeah, organization and arts. That's one way to build up a kind of a participation system for arts. And this is very vivid. Right. So I think this is quite uh, like a, uh, uh, from down to top. And in China, maybe everybody will recognize the system as like a top to down steel. So that's quite- That's the yeah. traditional approach so right, far, right? Right, right, right. And to my understanding, I hear I learned things. Um, what is, actually I, uh, the, the research interest for, for me here is uh, more like a cultural city, cultural planning. Mm -hmm. So I learned the history of arts participation in America, in the United States. I think it's like, um, uh, it's also step by step uh, progress, pro yeah, the process. And once it also lacks audience. And so in the 80s, say that's kind of a year to build audience. Mm -hmm. So participation is an approach to engage audiences into the arts. So I think China now is on the step, is on that stage, maybe 20, 30 years behind, but it's, it's quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever we learn that this is important, we will catch up that. Yeah, but you may also uh, be looking at the, the best examples of American mm -hmm. culture and participation yeah. and, f and not looking at what I would call the mainstream or places which are not as developed as uh, Boston and, and surroundings. Mm -hmm. So you may have the impression that it's all uh, 30 years ahead here, while if you would travel a couple of uh, distances, then mm. you might find out that it's more or less similar still to what down uh, to uh, top to down? Um, <laughs> not necessarily top to down, but right. the facilities, the creativity, the innovations mm -hmm. may not be spread all over uh, yeah. the United States, which is obviously also true for your country. You uh, mentioned uh, uh, previously that 
uh, the, the migration from the rural to the urban mm -hmm. sites has created all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. bottlenecks and stumbling blocks. Right. And that may also uh, happen here. And back to your statement about participation, how can you turn what I would call passive receivers, mm -hmm. and that's ba uh, basically the Chinese culture, mm -hmm. like uh, more receptive than, than responsive, right. uh, how can you turn them into active participants? Yeah, this is a very uh, good question actually, yeah, and uh, I think uh, technology is something like an engine for mm -hmm. all the social, yeah, for most of social change. And you know, we uh, when we study communication studies, we pay so much more attention on. I mean, the technology development. Right. Actually, the history will, will be written by the technology. Actually, so uh, for example, here uh, the, the the very obvious trend is that how to use social media. Right. And we will address that social media different definition. One is that it's me media or it's my personal media, mm -hmm. especially those uh, electronic device like a uh, cell phone is also another new media. And of Twitter. Yeah, yeah Twitter and, and also China has a uh, microblog, mm -hmm. has, uh, also has FaceTime, uh, Facebook, it's, it's a but just different name, just right. in Chinese, and also have engine, uh, yeah, searching engine like Baidu. Yeah. So everything we have too. So that's what can happen here actually will happen in China, the same thing. So. Uh, so what is needed to make that happen? What? What is needed in addition to technology uh -huh. to make that kind of uh, uh, availability uh, to be shared by everybody? Mm -hmm. Because of course, as you know, the critique from this part of the world uh, about uh, uh, China, uh, official policies is uh, yeah. one tries to censor, one tries to screen right, right, right. and, and uh, tr uh, hide certain things for the population. It will probably take a few more uh, years before that indeed is being addressed and, uh, and, and solved as a, as a problem, no? Uh, I think, I, I do believe that censorship is kind of a universal topic, mm -hmm. not for China only, because uh, we actually see a lot of evidence already. So, uh, but the point is that uh, I, th I personally, I see a, my generation compared with my uh, elder generation, mm -hmm. and we can see, uh, you know, political life can be quite uh, separately existing there, and we can live our normal life. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, in, in the years, like uh, uh, we say Cultural Revolution that time, maybe your normal life is political. Mm -hmm. So everything is political. But here we, now I think younger generation, they are quite professional. And they can see what's, what is the politics, what is the real life. Right. Yeah, they can separate them. And they use social media. One thing is very good is that I, I, I found, I, I don't know whether you recognize that uh, in, the, in 2008, that year, the, the earthquake happened in mm -hmm. China. Uh, the, larger, the largest amount, I mean the largest population among volunteers are from those who were born after 80s. Mm -hmm. That's totally another generation. And that a generation, why they are so confident about themselves, because they were born in the time when the country just goes up and up and stronger and stronger. So they will feel confident about the future themselves. And the other reasons that they never experienced some very local or very Chinese style political, you know, movements. Right. Yeah, they are living in a quite stable society. So they naturally, they will feel more like uh, all the human beings feel. Mm -hmm. So that's the other good advantage from that generation. Right. And the third one is that they were born in such kind of uh, age of internet. And technology, yeah, I mean, technically, they have like a literacy of new media. They, ha they were born, I mean, they, they, they have that talent. So I think from these kind of, you can say, uh, technolo uh, te technic uh, technically perspective, you also can say cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were growing without, you know, without hesitation to use new media, to mm -hmm. use technology, to, to, to use these new tools. So that's very natural for them. I think it's a very objective, uh, how to say, it's just happened.
Yeah, I, right. I tend to agree with you. Uh, right. uh, censorship is all over, and what is being defined as censorship here doesn't necessarily have to be the right. same elsewhere and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, uh, my limited uh, exposure to uh, Chinese students and uh, universities and public life uh, indeed indicates that people there know how to uh, zigzag through the system just in mm -hmm. similar ways as uh, American uh, youngsters do it here. Uh, the, the gates may be different, different names, different uh, procedures, right. but in the end they will also, the nature get, is the same. They will right. also get where they want to uh, go to. Yeah. So uh, it's another cultural environment where they have learned to uh, survive in and, and to adjust in. Uh, yeah, I, guess. I, I think the other thing I'm learning from that generation is that they were born with kind of a sense to do things good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very strong for them, very strong motivation for them, and because they are living in a much better situation compared with uh, the older days in China, and they feel, you know, they it's kind of a return to the society, that kind of uh, feeling. And uh, uh, around me, I'm quite older, I think, <laughs> there are many younger friends what they want to learn from me is mm -hmm. that how to use social media, how to use internet to do things good. Means can be everything. Right. Like, uh, uh, for example, they use social. I mean, they they will set up a, a website to, to contribute time to those uh, people who needs uh, people caring or accompanying with them or r sometimes reading books for them. Yeah, this is very. Uh, I think it happened like uh, almost seven or eight years ago. And some are just organizing something. They are s these things may be quite small. Mm -hmm. I think they are small things, but they are doing that. Like, uh, uh, yeah, just in that earthquake, they will use uh, uh, you know email or 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 tw it's th that time there's no no Twitter. They just use some blog or anyway to the QQ. Uh, uh, QQ, yeah, yeah, QQ. They just. Uh, you know, attract more people to contribute to resources like uh, foods or clothes to, to the disaster yeah. area. So nobody teach them to do these things. They just feel they want to do that. Right. For example, like uh, my son, when I say, oh, wh what is your dream in your future? He said, I just want to serve the human being, ser serve the whole world, mm -hmm. serve the globe. Anything will be good. I I anything I can do if mm -hmm. it's good. So this is kind of, uh, I think I realized this is a very good, you know, trend for, for the whole nation's development. Mm -hmm. So people and the younger generation will be more like a human being brain. Mm -hmm. So this is good. Yeah, yeah. although we need to uh, take a bit of a backseat and wait and see how this will d develop because there are... Yeah. Of course, uh, a lot of uh, questions related to sure. what is called uh, online activism. Uh, yeah. It's easier to uh, push a button and say, I'm ag I agree with this or I agree with that. The next step, of course, would need to be put this into action, uh, go and, and help the yeah. people, etc. Yeah. And in your uh, uh, explanation, that is uh, also happening in China. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a bit early days to make a final assessment <laughs> here, but I do understand and I agree that it's uh, a positive development. Yeah. Now, if, if we go back to the theme of, of uh, creative cities and, oh, uh, yeah. and uh, um, how can a, a a space which is uh, creative, which is uh, participatory, uh, mm -hmm. uh, both in the f physical culture as well as the cultural sense uh, right. uh, of a, a city like Shanghai. How can uh, a, an authority facilitate more participation, more creativity, more innovation? Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, you know, I was uh, seconded to the government, the municipal government, in two thousand. For, for that period, actually, mm -hmm. for two years, I was uh, creative and communication director for the city pavilion, mm -hmm. which present the new made image of Shanghai. And also, at that time, I was the spokesperson for the p pavilion and explaining why the story was produced like this right. and why the pavilion was designed like this. And I used, in my mind, I just tried to use more participatory strategy including the technology online and uh, also arts participation. The wall, I mean, the, there's only one side. It's a large wall, uh, so, uh, like a uh, nine meters length. Mm -hmm. And I, we use that wall to attract Shanghai citizens to uh, 
take a picture about mm. we we, had, we we just like uh, raised a, a theme say uh, Shanghai in your eyes that's right. the theme so you, you you can take any picture about the new Shanghai in your eyes then just contribute to us and uh, we will uh, put it on the wall and we use like a it's kind of a triangular re rotation so mm -hmm. it's a, it's innovative by by yeah, innovated by IBM yeah. <laughs> actually it's very new creative you know uh, equipment so and at that time oh, almost uh, 10,000 pictures putting together and those younger kids they don't know how to take pictures using you know digital device and they are too young, so we, we, we welcome to, to, to welcome them to draw a picture mm -hmm. about the Shanghai in their eyes. So I will show this uh, by video in, in, in the seminar, right? Okay. So that's the one way. I think when we do this, all the city leaders told us, say, engage people, mm -hmm. engage people to create, uh, you know, as more engaged as, as possible. And I remember that uh, uh, you know, all the facilities in some way are for entertainment, actually. And you should make people physically feel happy right. with participation, feel rewarded by the participation. And uh, I remember that when, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a big, I mean, uh, for us, it's quite excited when uh, uh, Hu Jintao visited our, you know, visited our pavilion. And mm -hmm. uh, we told her, yeah, we told him the story about how the wall was, uh, created and mm -hmm. he said that's so good yeah engage people to participate is the best thing so i understand that even from top to down leaders want people to participate right. yeah just more strategically i think that's that's good that's acceptable but anyway participation is very welcome and now i'm on a new project this is for a district uh, now Shanghai is going to like uh, the new um, theme or new slogan of the city is smarter city, mm -hmm. which more digitized, more mediated, more uh, I think more networked. That's the culture of the n future media. Right. So in this way, uh, now they uh, j yesterday last night I, I FaceTime with them. That's kind of a FaceTime meeting. It's um, with them. I say how to build up that p pavilion and say so use the way of participation. And how we use, like uh, when we do survey, uh, the, the first, uh, the pre-survey, I mean, that period, we, we, we you know, interview people, mm -hmm. let them ask questions about uh, what a smarter city you want, or what, uh, what is your expectation about a smarter city, or what kind of knowledge you don't have, or you don't want to have. So in that way, we engage people from the very beginning to let them design this pavilion with us together. So I just raised that idea and all say good. That's the way we want. And this is not only a pavilion. Actually, this is kind of a uh, communication campaign for a new theme of the city. To get people actively involved. Yeah, involved and let them raise questions about mm -hmm. that. Because, you know, smarter city is not very easy to explain, right. to be explained, because it's a so many things involved in technology or even you know all the digital things actually are behind the screen mm -hmm. you can see nothing all you can see is maybe just uh, just some buttons or just some uh, facilities only these kind of things so it's very difficult to describe what a really smarter city is yes so i think our first step strategy one is that let them ask questions let general people let citizenship yeah citizens ask what is that or what they want it is. So this is the way we think mm -hmm. now. I think this is quite a vivid change from, you know, as before all the museums are designed very top to down yes, way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's consume, it. not uh, right, participate. Right, right, right. And I think the other thing is that you, if you want to develop your city more smarter, that needs consumption. Yeah, you need, uh, how do you say, you need consumers. Yeah, 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 yeah you need, need participants. To, yeah, partici participation can be a very good approach for marketing, mm -hmm. actually. So that's, yeah, I think that's quite, uh, you know, now, um, especially after Expo, right. it's, n it's now more popular. Now, yeah, more, and more and so you are right. obviously very hopeful and optimistic about this kind of process. Uh, you're taking your country yeah. or citizens uh, to yeah to uh, yeah but of course you should be you know you should be very careful about the strategy you should mm -hmm. design the whole process strategically 
what time to yeah in, engage people and from when and right. how to organize the whole process don't you know that's that's just very normal uh, marketing or communication right. strategy so yeah yeah if i may uh, i think that we need to uh, wrap up in a minute but if i may come back to uh, the concept of innovation uh, mm -hmm. which uh, you also uh, uh, ref refer to yeah. uh, and you mentioned ibm in the case of the uh, oh, shanghai yes. expo uh, I uh, w have uh, attended a, a similar kind of uh, exhibition in Wuhan uh, some time mm -hmm. ago and there it was Siemens which uh, yeah, 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 brought yeah. most of the technology to the, yeah. uh, the, the conference so to speak. Uh, of course you, n you know that there is that kind of uh, ongoing critique of copying and uh, mm -hmm. piracy etc. Mm -hmm. But that leads to the question of uh, how innovative can a culture become uh, yeah. which has in a way traditionally not be uh, known to be that uh, advanced, at least not for the past uh, 100 years, because of course China with its rich civilization and culture has always had uh, an innovative component, but now in the uh, international competition, so to speak, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, innovation seems to come from uh, elsewhere. Now mm -hmm. how, how to revive, how to uh, uh, stimulate uh, more innovative, creative thinking, mm -hmm. which is more indigenous, which comes from the country itself? Mm. Yeah, I think this is quite a big question. <laughs> and first of all, I position myself as a communicator. Mm -hmm. I think this is a professional position, actually, and uh, I want to contribute uh, with the background of uh, professional, you know, uh, skills as mm -hmm. a communicator. So I think the first thing is uh, to communicate your new idea, your new dream, your policy, your decision in a very strategic way. So this is very help to deduce the cost mm -hmm. of the development. So I think actually, uh, 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 for example, I mean, Shanghai, the city, the very important characteristic of, uh, or, or, or the culture of Shanghai is like, a, I, I always think Shanghai is a learning city. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, geographically, it was born as an international city. It's a hub. Right. And uh, historically, the long time, it was, you, you know, the city experienced so many different periods. Yes. From colonial city and to, you know, uh, under, you know, to be under the leadership of, uh, of the new China or, or things like also that. Also a very cultural yeah, city. Yeah, very cultural city and a very, you know, also very uh, melting city. Right. So every time we Shanghai people, we understand that we need to learn to catch up everything new. So learning actually is the very basic literacy for innovation. I think if, you, if the city doesn't want to learn, there will be no innovation. So I think this... Um, uh, this is a very good seed. We have the seeds of uh, innovation, mm -hmm. but the point is that innovation, we should define innovation. What is real innovation? And we see some problems now in existing in China. For example, like it's huge market, so it doesn't need you to create, originally create something. Mm -hmm. You can copy something. You can make some faked uh, products to satisfy the great demand of the society of the right. yeah of the market that is a huge problem, but now the younger generation have realized that problem and uh, we know the core com competitiveness of the country is not copy, is innovate or cr originally create something new, that's 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 the quite uh, now widely recognized by not only the leadership but also by the general people. So we, in this time, I think communication is more important. Use very uh, well-designed, very strategic uh, st uh, strategy to attract the people or to engage people, learn mm -hmm. how to innovate, how to change that culture from copying to innovate. So now we are in the critical time. Actually, I think this is a good time, golden time for communicator. Yeah, you can do a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems, uh, give, uh, from my own experience, that you are very fast uh, in uh, adopting and uh, adjusting. So you're fast learners. Right. And uh, education and communication, indeed, are the hallmarks, the more important priorities yeah. for the future. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, sharing this with us. And Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, uh, this afternoon's seminar. Yeah.
Thank you for your interest. Thank you.